Hey, it's Mrs. Cat, and I am here to take you on our first walkthrough of a three levels diagram. Um, before we get into this, um, I want to talk about the format of this chart. You've got a whole book of them for the semester if you have a hard copy, otherwise you're using this digital copy like I have here. So what you're going to notice is that there is a triangle in the center with our main concept. Is that's where that's going to go. And then we have our three levels of chemistry. We're going to look at things at the macro level. This is macroscopic. Okay, this is going to be things that we see and observe with our own eyes um, and things that we can experience. Okay. We also have things at the particulate level. That's going to be the things that we can't see. Um, the microscopic, small, particulate nature of matter. And then our third level is the symbolic. And this is going to be things that we would represent numerically, mathematically, um, potentially with different relationships. Um, but that's kind of how we use our three levels diagrams. Um, Last time you were asked to watch a short video about mass, a little Eureka video, and we're going to use this time today to set up our mass three levels diagram. Now, our three levels diagrams are going to be things that we will typically come back to and add more things to as we learn and gain more information. And that's exactly what we're going to do here with our first one, which is mass. As our main concept. So we're going to add mass here in the center, then we're also going to add a definition for mass. Now from the Eureka video and maybe from your previous science course experience, you may know that mass is going to give us the amount of matter in something. We're just going to make this simple, the amount of matter. I like to color code and highlight, so I like to underline and highlight that main concept in the center triangle. Okay. Now there's no right or wrong way to go through these three levels, but I'm going to start with our macroscopic level. Okay. And one of the things that we can observe as humans about mass in matter is inertia, which is one of those concepts from the video. Okay, I'm going to change my color up here and I'm going to add inertia. Now, like I said, we are going to complete some of this chart today, come back to it later. So please make sure that you are not using up all of the space in your box. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and define inertia. Again, we're going to keep it pretty simple. Um, based on what we know about inertia, objects that have a lot of mass are harder to either start moving or to stop moving. And so that's what we're going to say as our definition. Just keep it simple. Objects with a lot of mass are harder. to start or stop moving. And there were a couple really good examples from that Eureka video. Okay. We're going to move down to our particulate nature of mass. Now, We've got some info from not just the Eureka Mass video that we can add in here, but we also have some stuff from the coffee can demo and our wrap up discussion of that that we can add in here. Okay, so let me go ahead and change colors again. Um, first thing, let's say that we know that more particles that are represented or are present means that there's more mass. So, in this particulate space on our three levels diagram, you can expect to be drawing particulate level diagrams. 
So that's what we're going to do here, keeping it simple. Um, I'm going to do whoop, more particles. I'm going to do like, I don't know, let's go like 12 particles. And that's going to have more mass than nine particles. The number here doesn't really matter, okay, but more particles, more mass, that's what counts. Another thing that we can go ahead and add into our particulate level for mass is that we know that there are different particles, right? And we can at this point say that different particles, which we're going to represent differently when we are um, drawing them, probably have different masses. Okay, so different particles, different masses. Um, again, there are different ways that you can represent these different types of particles. Um, you can use open circles or closed circles. You can change colors. You can um, shade your circles in a different way to give it a different pattern. doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to go with different colors here. So I'm going to go, let's go with red. So if we have one red particle compared to another red particle, we're going to say that those masses are equal, right? But if I compare a red particle to a blue particle, okay, they're going to be unequal. Um, let's say I actually drew this blue one a little bit larger. Um, let's say that that blue one is larger in mass. Okay. Um, as far as our symbolic nature goes, there's really only one thing that I feel like we can add at this point, um, and that is the unit that we use in order to measure the amount of mass of a substance, and that is going to be grams. Change colors here. That's our base unit. Um, you could also have kilograms, centigrams, micrograms, throw any metric prefix on there. Um, if you are using grams, you are measuring mass in some capacity. Okay. One of the things that you will be doing um, in our mass and change lab, our first lab, is measuring initial and final masses to find a possible change in mass, and those will all be measured and recorded in grams. So, quick snapshot of our first three levels diagram. Okay. We've got you know, a little bit of something in each of our boxes, macroscopic, particulate, and symbolic. And again, as we learn more and we gain more knowledge, we're going to come back to this document and add some more stuff to it.